Welcome back to another Learn Electrics video. In today's video, we will look at the subject of cable lengths and cable resistances. What is the connection between length and resistance? And can you measure the length of a cable with your multi-tester? Let us look at a frequently asked question, which is, why do we want to know the cable length and the cable resistance? If we know both these values, we can determine R1 plus R2, and from that we can calculate ZS. And ZS, as you know, is one of the checks that we do to be certain that the breakers and fuses will operate correctly and protect the occupants of the building. Knowing the length, we can also calculate the voltage drop to show that the voltage at the point of use is enough for the equipment to work normally. We can also confirm that the cable is not too small in size that it represents an overheating danger and a possible cause of fires. The opposite of this is that the cable size is much bigger than it needs to be, in which case you or the customer are paying a lot more money for the copper that you do not need. If we know the cable length and the cable size, we can calculate the cable resistance and we will look at an example of this very soon. If we know the cable size and the cable resistance, we can calculate the cable length. And we have an example of this also. The third value we have is the cable size. But we would not normally be expected to calculate this. We should already know this by looking at the cable. And many of today's cables have the size already moulded into the plastic sheathing. As shown here, if we know any two of the three values, we can calculate the third. And it is very easy. We mentioned the size of the cable. We should really say the cross-sectional area, or CSA. This is not the same as the diameter of the copper. It is the area of the cut surface, and it is measured in square millimetres but we often just say 10 mil or 6 mil instead of saying 6 millimetres squared and so on. We are showing here a typical earth cable for the cross-sectional area of 16 millimetres squared. So we call it a 16 millimetre cable. But the copper is actually only about 5 millimetres across. Also here we are showing you some twin and earth. The brown and blue are both 2.5 millimetres squared in area, but they measure not quite one millimetre across. The 1.5 millimetre squared earth is a lot less than one millimetre across. So, on to real life examples. Here we have a roll of 2.5 millimetre twin and earth cable. We should know from the last slide that the brown and blue conductors are 2.5 millimetre squared and the earth or CPC is 1.5 millimetres squared. And those are the standard dimensions for this cable. And that is all that we know about this cable. Yet we have been asked to determine its length. Why? Well, on site, knowing the length is sometimes the difference between using the cable that we have in the back of the van or driving a 40 mile round trip to buy another reel of cable. Wouldn't it be good to be able to know that you have enough cable with you? And that could make the difference between finishing the job and going home at 3pm or still being on site at 6pm. How do we do this then? First step, at one end, strip back the brown conductor and join it to the earth conductor. I use crocodile clips, some people use terminal strips, Others use Wago connectors. Whatever you do, just join the two cables together. At the other end of the cable, we keep the conductors separate. Again, strip back the brown, connect one lead of your meter to it and the other lead to the earth as shown. With the meter set on low ohms, measure the resistance and I recommend you write it down. In our example, 
the cable measures 0 0.62 ohms. That is the resistance of the brown conductor and the earth conductor combined. We have measured all the way down the brown wire through the connection and back up the earth wire. Now you will need guidance note 3. I am using the version to 18th edition, the one with the blue flash on the front. And if you turn to page 148, you will find table B1. Here we can find the information that we need to process our resistance measurement and find the cable length. Follow the first column down until you find the 2.5 mm section, the CSA of our brown conductor. Now look in the second column and find 1.5 mm, the CSA of the earth conductor. The third column will tell us the combined resistance for these two conductors as shown in the red box. It is given here as 19.51 milliohms per meter. Now we need to do something else with this information. Using the table we found that 2.5 twin and earth with a 1.5 earth at a resistance of 19.51 milliohms per meter length. We measured the cable in ohms, yet the table is in milliohms. They don't match. We need to make them the same units. So multiply the measured resistance by a thousand, and now everything is in milliohms. Divide that number by the milliohms per meter to give you the length. This little equation shown here tells you what we are doing. Putting that into practice then, we measured 0 0.62 ohms, multiply that by a thousand and we get 620 milliohms. Divide that by the 19.51 from the tables and we have 31.78 meters. The cable is 31.78 meters long so easy. We can work it backwards too. Look at our little circle again. If we know two values we can calculate the third. If we know the length and we know the size or cross-sectional area then we can calculate what the resistance should be. So we know the length. We know how long the cable is. We want to know what the resistance or R1 plus R2 will be. Length in metres multiplied by the milliohms from table B1 will give the resistance of the cable. We have 31.78 metres and we have 19.51 milliohms. Multiply them together. 31.78 multiplied by 19.51 gives us 620 milliohms, the resistance for the cable. Divide this by a thousand to convert it back to ordinary ohms and we have 0 0.62 ohms. And this is the number we started with just a few slides ago. A recap then on what we have talked about. There are three values of interest to us with the cable. The length of the cable, the resistance of the cable and the size or cross-sectional area. Of the cable. As we have seen, if we know two values, we can calculate the third. With all the information that we now have that relates to the cable, we can do a number of things. We can calculate the volts drop in the cable. In other words, how much voltage is lost in the copper conductors. We can calculate R1 plus R2, the resistance of the cable, and this can be used in our ZS calculations later on. Also, we can determine that the cable is the correct size for safety and economy. Too small a cross-sectional area and the cable may overheat if it's taken to near its maximum load and it may even catch fire. It does happen and it happens more often than you think. Too large a cable size and we are paying for extra copper copper that we don't really need. 
someone has to pay for it so we need to get that right as well and that is it there's no black magic to it just practice a few calculations yourself and you will soon master it thank you for watching this video from learn electrics we do hope that you've enjoyed it if you click the save button below you'll be able to replay this video at your convenience better still click on subscribe and you will have access to all of our tech tip videos plus you won't miss our next weekly video upload once again thank you and we hope to see you again very soon